Hello and welcome to my step-by-step -step overclocking guide for GTX 960. Uh, this card is called by NVIDIA's marketing team as Overclocker's Dream. So let's have a look at what it can actually do. And um, for the demonstration purposes today I am using this KFA2. Uh, it's a EXOC model, extreme overclocked already. So we are going to take it further, obviously. And also, this uh, is the European brand. In other parts of the world, it is also known as Galax. So, KFA2 or Galax, same thing. Let's get down to business. All right, so before we begin, uh, there are a few warnings and basically things that I can, uh, want to say. Uh, first of all, why do we overclock? It's because we want that free extra performance and some warnings are number one. One in a million chance that your graphics card will actually get damaged. Uh, it never happened to me, it never happened to anyone that I know, but it happened, so just saying, you know. Uh, number two is graphics card warranty is uh, can be void if you overclock, uh, but some cards are exceptions so you must check your warranty for that information before you do anything if you worry about your warranty if you need it uh, number three uh, never ever rush when overclocking to everything uh, you know make sure that you have enough time that you don't have to rush uh, number four all software that i will use today is free and available to anyone who wants it i will put the links to download that um, you'll find them in the description uh, below this video and uh, number five uh, there's more than one way to do this so i will show you my way and uh, here we go so the first thing you'll need is afterburner this program right here second unigine heaven benchmark and third is uh, sniper elite benchmark so let me walk you through it uh, basically what you do first is uh, you use sniper elite benchmark fire it up it takes you through this benchmark and it gives you the frames per second number uh, that will be your stock frames per second number. You can just uh, take and make a note of it so that when you compare it um, after you've done overclocking, you can compare it to the overclocked one so that you can see uh, what the progress is, you know, what you actually received. Um, but to, to do the entire thing, you actually need just these two. And... Um, in the afterburner you set up the monitoring tools to display core clock memory clock gpu temperature and power level you can do that in settings monitoring and then just move these up put the ticks next to them so that it's displayed right here at the top of the list there's some things in the bottom but uh, this is this is how i do it and as you can see, there are a few things that are available. Core clock is locked on this card. So, sorry, core, core voltage is locked. So that is not available. Power limit. Uh, don't just go uh, putting it all the way up. Uh, that Because that can actually cause instability when you do overclocking. <clears throat> you, have to, you have to watch. Actually, you have to watch the power level. And if it goes up to 100 or close to 100 that's when you just put it up like by 5 or whatever i know that i need 105 on this overclock uh, so i'm going to apply that right away fan speed leave it on auto because cooling on uh, on this card is good and um Basically, what I want is, I want first I want to find out what is my absolute maximum core clock. So I fire up the benchmark and tick here, so it runs in the windowed mode. With Alt-Tab, choose MSI Afterburner to put it here in the corner 
I do it that way so that I can move the sliders and I can still see uh, all the all the things that I need to see like temperature and the power level so basically what we do is the way I do it is I increase color clock by increments of 10 hit apply and then watch for about 10 to 20 seconds for any signs of instability uh, that will be displayed as like any kinds of artifacts um, believe me if you've never seen those you will know you will know for sure I'll try to show them later but you will definitely know there will be like uh, black spots uh, changes in color uh, ripples all, a lot, all, all over uh, the image so I increase it increments by 10 so this is stable I go another plus another 10 apply and observe once again and I found that the top one is 180 for my card is overclocked 180 maximum but when we start overclocking the memory uh, the core can become unstable with this setting so we must find uh, like a sweet spot between these two core and memory clocks so what I usually do is if I know that it's 180 I uh, and also if you take it further for example 190 for example and you start seeing the artifacts you just take it one step back and that will be your safe overclock but basically once I've found that 180 is my top clock then I uh, lowered it to 160 and I started bringing up the memory clock I usually do it in increments of 20 uh, maybe 25 and during all this process you watch the power limit if it goes close to 100 that's when you increase it as I said but I already did so you watch it and increase it if necessary but what happened when I was increasing it and um, I could take my memory and do the stable overclock with 100 plus on memory but I had to bring the core clock down to 140 because if I was setting it to 150 or 160 or 145 it was becoming unstable with this core uh, with this memory clock so this is my perfect uh, overclocking setting that uh, my chip can handle on this card and um, if you don't know you know silicon lottery uh, even like the same card from the same make it can perform differently so someone can get 140 like I did just now uh, someone can get 250 maybe even higher someone can get only 50 so keep that in mind um, result varies so once again as I said once you've uh, found that sweet spot between these two clocks you hit apply and you can uh, actually see that you know it boosts all the way up to a hundred uh, 1507 so that's pretty awesome you uh, exit the benchmark and the next thing you do is you test it in the real game because benchmark is only a synthetic test and uh, this overclock that you've just achieved can also be unstable uh, during gaming so that's when you need to go into uh, any game you want uh, it would be good to have like a something heavy like Tomb Raider or uh, Shadow of Mordor or Battlefield or whatever and uh, just check that um, it works for uh, games as well because if it doesn't if your uh, driver crashes 
if uh, the game crashes, if you see any artifacts while gaming, that's when you start taking it, um, taking steps back on the clocks again. The same process as in the benchmarks, but using the game now. And it will be, um, for example, I didn't have to do that because it worked. But in some cases, it, exactly, that's um, what I was saying by you have to have time on your hands to check everything. That is the case when you will need extra time to perform all those uh, adjustments Well, firing up the game, then adjusting in core clocks, and so on and so forth. So there you go. I hope this was helpful to you, and um, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for future videos. If you, uh, if you want to see any other cards that uh, I can overclock, you, you can find the list in the description below, the cards that I have. Uh, make a request, uh, future cards as well. But until then, see you next time.